Hey guys, Ivan here, and let's start this video with a Chris Bumstead update that screams game over all over it. That is what everybody is saying in the comments down below, he is going to remain the Mr. Olympia for as long as he wants that, and this is the thing with Chris, he usually doesn't look his best until the show happens, until he has done dieting, he doesn't like to be ready 2-3 weeks out, he times it so that he is ready on the day of the show. I'm guessing it's because of his autoimmune system disease, so he cannot push his body too much, he can of course, but he's risking a flare up, and for that reason he's holding back for as long as he can, until it is show time, and that's when he peaks, that's when he does the dehydration, and that's where he pushes everything to the max, and usually, you know, in the weeks coming to the show, he doesn't look super impressive, but right now, guys, at 7 weeks out, I don't think he ever looked this impressive at this point in prep. So, it's gotta be progression. I mean, I don't think he's pushing anything harder this year than he did last year as far as prep. I don't think he's doing more gear or anything like that. I think it is just the progress that he made in the offseason. And you guys saw him train in the offseason. He posted some stuff regularly. Uh, he, he was training really hard, deadlifting like a maniac and squatting and everything. And apparently it is paying off. It's paying off. I mean, look at him. Look at this physique. I mean, when classic physique started, we all wanted like a perfect classic physique. And I think we got it. I don't think it's gonna get much better than this. I mean, you can say his arms are not the prettiest shape, but they are not small arms anymore, man. I mean, just compare the size of his arms to shoulders and chest. It's in a good proportion. Also compare it to the waistline, to the calves. It's just a really good proportion. Yeah, maybe in the front double bicep, it's not the prettiest shape ever. It's not like Arnold Schwarzenegger biceps. But in this front lat spread, I mean, it's such a shame that we don't have a front lat spread in classic physique. Anyways, in this front lat spread, I don't really see any flaws. I cannot, I cannot pick it apart. I cannot see anything that is wrong with this classic physique. This is the ideal representation of classic physique. It's mind blowing. It's insane. It's ridiculous. And he's in a really good shape. Like, uh, how do you know when Chris is shredded? You know it when his legs are detailed completely. And they're not quite there yet, but they are very close to their final form. They are about maybe at 80% at this point, and that is fast, I mean, he has 7 weeks more to go, so he can probably take it slower now, take it easy, and not diet super hard for a while, maybe have some cheat meals, and then hammer it down in the final couple of weeks, but overall, I mean, it's just, it just phenomenal, and I have no doubts that this is gonna be another easy win for Chris Bumstead, and a lot of people, as I noticed in my comment section, think that Robert Timms, this guy right here, has a chance against Chris, and they also think, some of you guys, don't get offended, but I'm just, I'm just not agreeing with you that they are saying that he is super classic. This is a new physique update of Robert Timms, and even though he's also shredded, he's probably leaner than Chris because he just competed, uh, even though he has small tiny waist, I don't know, classic, that's just something you either see or you don't see. I mean, when you look at Chris, he just screams classic all over it. And this, I don't know, this looks like a tall, downsized bodybuilder with a small waist and small joints. And decent aesthetics. But does it scream classic physique? I don't think so. I wouldn't say so. And if you talk about can he challenge Chris Bumstead, I say absolutely not. Ian Valier, who I always trust, I don't think he's saying stuff just to say it, just to create hype. He thinks that Robert is going to be a challenge for Chris and that he is better than Brian, Terence, and everybody else? I don't think so. I disagree. I know Ian saw him in person, and he is the coach of the greatest bodybuilder in classic physique right now, Chris Bumstead. He knows his stuff, and when he says something, he really means it. He doesn't say just uh, for the hype reasons, but, I mean, just looking at his physique, I just don't see it. I disagree with Ian, and I don't think he's going to be the top two. I think he his best placement is going to be, like, fourth place. I think that that's like uh, the best case scenario for Robert Teams, top 4, probably top 6, somewhere between 6 and 4, but uh, you guys tell me what do you think if you disagree, but I mean compare this to Chris Bumstead and tell me who is more, <laughs> not just who is more classic, but uh, is this guy similar to, to, to Chris 
if you talk about the classic lines. I don't think it's it's even comparable. I think it's a completely different league. All right, let's move on to the big guys to bodybuilding. And as you can see right here, Akim Williams, the top six Olympian, joins the Camel Crew, the Kuwait team. As you can see, Abdullah, the coach of Brandon Curry, for example, posted a photo of Akim with a caption saying six weeks out. Somebody asked him, are you coaching him? He replied, yes. And also, in a recent interview on RX Muscle, Akim said that he has a new coach and that he doesn't want to reveal just yet who it is. Apparently, they wanted to hide it, but it's no secret anymore. You can see right now, he is coached by Abdullah, the guy from Kuwait. Now, does this mean that Akim is gonna go to Kuwait to train, to prep for Arnold and Mr. Olympia? I don't think so. I, I doubt that because he has how many? Five weeks, something like that. Four or five weeks until the Arnold. And I don't think he has enough time to travel to Kuwait with all the restrictions and, and issues, stuff like that. Yeah, I don't think he's gonna do that. And why would he? How much change can, can he really make training over there for four weeks? It does make a lot of sense to go over there, but if you are at least like, I don't know, 12, 16 weeks out, so you have enough time to make some kind of progression. I mean, you have ideal terms over there uh, for prep because you have no distractions, you're in hotel, you get your food, you get your water, you go to the gym, you have trainers, it's just ideal training camp, you get everything, of course, you get the highest quality gear as well. So at least, I mean, 10 weeks, 8 weeks minimum, but like 4 weeks, that just wouldn't make sense, especially now with all the traveling restrictions. So I don't think he's going to go to Kuwait, but he's coached by this guy, and this guy is a coach of uh, Brandon Curry, so Mr. Olympia winner. And uh, I don't know how much, uh, how well will he do with Akim? How much change will these guys make on Akim's physique? But we don't know when they started working. Maybe they worked for that Puerto Rico Pro and they had a plan or since then. Maybe they planned to not really pick Akim for Puerto Rico. It was a weaker show. You know, he was against Mohamed Shaban and Hassan Mustafa. Those guys are not exactly top tier. They didn't win a show this year. And Akim is top six Olympian. So he probably went for an easier show. And they're gonna try to pick him for Arnold and Olympia. Can he win Arnold Classic? It's a possibility. I think a lot of people are sleeping on Akim because he's not outspoken bodybuilder. He has no drama around his name, zero whatsoever. He's not like a famous, popular bodybuilder like, for example, Ian Valier. He doesn't do a lot of podcast interviews. He's not posting a lot of content on IG. So he's not very much outspoken and that's why people are not really counting him as one of the top guys, even though he is. He's sixth spot, the Mr. Olympia, sixth best bodybuilder in the world. Can he win Arnold? I think it's possible. I think he can. I think he can and we kind of would be surprised, but watch this video again so you don't get too surprised. All right, next we have an update of Arnold Schwarzenegger. Arnold training at the age of 74. Look at this guy, he is still doing it, he's, I mean this is not him, this is him, doing it, killing it, over there, and I know there is a lot of controversy, a lot of different opinions about Arnold, me personally, I am still a huge fan of Arnold, I can't start hating the legend, the man I idolized my entire life, who was one of my biggest motivations always, just because he said something stupid once. I mean, people are so sensitive these days, man, I, you, you do so many great things and you are loved by everybody your entire life, everybody loved Arnold always, he did so much for bodybuilding community and he does one thing wrong and they all turn their backs on him. This cancel culture, man, this is just, I, I don't know, I don't like it, I don't like it, I, I, I definitely am staying loyal to Arnold and I'm still a fan. So Arnold right now at 74 is still training and he still looks good, he looks fit. 74 guys, 74, I mean for a 74 year old he looks absolutely amazing, he's still working on his body. And look at the comment right here, he says uh, you don't have to wear masks outside. Uh, so he's still uh, fighting ridicule in everything and uh, that's, what I, that's what I love about Arnold, he's not taking things too seriously. Neither am I. Life is not that serious, guys. Relax, chill out. Arnold is a legend. He will always remain a legend. Show some loyalty. Yes, I am. 
I love Arnold, and I, I and I and I and I love the fact that he's training super hard right now. He's still hitting the gym, and this is his physique update. Let's call it 2021. Arnold still looks great. He still looks fit, and with the, at this pace, if everything goes well with his heart, you know, he had a lot of surgeries. It looks like he's gonna be around for a while. He's not going anywhere. You can see it in his eyes that he wants that, and when he wants something he takes it so arnold schwarzenegger 2021 update steve kuklo with a new physique update now as you guys know steve lost the texas pro to ian valier and the reason why he lost in my opinion is conditioning and now it seems like he's working on improving it he looks much more shredded now flat though flatter than before but i think he knows what he's doing he's probably trying to get just dry hard super shredded for the arnold and then fill it up I know, I know he wants it. He was super disappointed by losing that Texas Pro. I think he he believed, he thought he's gonna do it, he's gonna win it. I think he was pretty confident in the pre-judging and then somehow Ian sneaked in and won that show. Maybe sneaked in is not exactly the best choice of words, but I believe Steve was winning after the pre-judging and then Ian sharpened it up for the for the finals. How did he do it? I asked this question him and his coach Patrick Tour, and they just said that Ian's body looks better as the day goes on. Evenings are the best part of his day as far as uh, what his physique looks like. He didn't do anything drastic, he just had a couple of more meals in, just kept doing what they were doing the entire day, and his body started looking sharper, harder, fuller, and he just hammered it for the, for the finals. He put that final nail in the coffin, and he took away the opportunity for Steve Kuklo to compete at the Mr. Olympia this year, most likely. Because still, Steve has a chance. He can go to the Mr. Olympia if he wins Arnold Classic. He actually managed to crack the top four last year, but I think Dexter, Bonek and Remy were a league ahead of him. I don't think it was close for him to crack the top three. I think this is a higher echelon of bodybuilders. Big Remy, Dexter Jackson and Bonek are just a league ahead and maybe he made some changes this year but I feel like he was better at the Arnold Classic last year than he was at the Texas. Maybe he was just a little bit sharper, I think he was a little bit bigger and improved muscularity wise at the Texas but at the Arnold he was I think sharper so if he improves on conditioning maybe he can do better but he's gonna face Ian Valier again and that's gonna be the first challenge he needs to overcome beating Ian. He beat Ian in Indie Pro 2019, but Ian made so many progressions until then, and now Ian is a better bodybuilder, apparently, at the Texas Pro, but still seems to be improving, he seems sharper. The thing with Ian is he is getting better show after show. Every show he does, the next show in that season, he looks better, so we can expect improvements from Ian as well. Maybe he's gonna flatten out too much, maybe Steven is gonna be fuller and shredded, more shredded, and so he's gonna take Ian out, but that's just tip of the iceberg. After Ian, you have so many great bodybuilders, and I doubt that Ian can win the Arnold Classic. And I don't know if Steve Kuklo can take Ian Valier out, so the chances of seeing Steve at the Mr. Olympia are rather slim. Slim to none. But he does look amazing, and I do think we're gonna see a better version of him at the Arnold Classic. But whatever you guys think about whichever part of this video, tell me in the comment section down below. Give this video a like if you enjoyed it, of course, and for more bodybuilding content like this, subscribe to my channel, guys. All the best and bye-bye.